Today we'll make these two patriotic signs. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own. All right, we're going to start with a variety of ribbons. Some are from Dollar Tree, some are thrifted. And Dollar Tree has a variety of window clings, so you just choose the ones that you like. I'm going to be using this one for mine. This is one of those, I think originally one of those Valentine signs from Dollar Tree, but somebody else DIY'd it. I got it from the thrift store. And yeah, I'm gonna DIY it again, so we're really stretching our book here. Just gonna use my metal ruler from Dollar Tree to gently tear or pull away the borders or frame for this piece of art. And then when I did so, I was very happy to see that most of the paper comes off as well. I'm gonna just take my foam sanding block and go around all the edges to make sure that I've gotten the glue off and that I've gotten off the pieces of paper that are left. And pretty much you can peel that glue off of the back by hand if you'd like. I'm gonna take a scrap piece of poster board and trace around my backing here with a pencil and then I'm just gonna cut that out. I'm gonna use some Elmer's Craft Bond spray glue and I'm gonna put that on. Love this stuff. Just started using it. I found it at the thrift store. Just gonna press that down. Be sure you clean your table up afterwards. I should have put something under there to protect it because it made kind of a sticky mess. But I cleaned it up with some alcohol and a rag. Okay, so I'm just gonna use my wood ruler to help make sure I got that nice and flat. Then I'm gonna peel off this larger cling. And we're gonna put this in the middle of this sign using some Elmer's washable glue. This is a purple glue stick that turns clear when it dries, which makes it great to be sure that you can see where you put it so you don't have any issues later with any edges or sides or, you know, parts that are trying to peel away. So I'm making kind of a mess, but you won't see it at all once it's dry. I'm gonna just kind of eyeball the center of it here. And then, believe it or not, I found some Cricut tools or some Silhouette or whichever one tools from the thrift store. Didn't find the machine, unfortunately, but I'm just gonna use that to flatten it out and make it nice and secure. And then I'm gonna take some of the stars that are on that, that come with that pack, and I'm just gonna place those down too. Just gonna rub a little bit of glue on there and then just place them down wherever I feel like I wanna put them. You can make a border or however you want to do yours. Now to just turn those edges under, I'm using a, again, with a sanding block. And I'm just going to go over the edges down and away. It's not necessarily trimming it off, but it, it is making it nice and flat and smooth around the edges. And that's kind of what I was going for. Now, you can use these furniture repair markers if you have any issues with your borders on here. See, they're camouflage. So it was a little peeled up spot there and I just went ahead and fixed it and now you can't see it. So we're going to put the glue down and put these back on. Start with the bottom, go to the side and then work yourself away around that way so that you make sure that it is nice and as square as possible by eyeballing it. All right and then this is the last piece. And I do have a little, you can see a little bit of the white up there on the top, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to make a frame for this with this rope that came from Dollar Tree. So, so far, we're using mainly Dollar Tree items. Now, this is how you're going to keep that rope from fraying out. I don't like the plastic edge that's on there, that little piece of tape. So you just take your glue, you press it down on the inside and a little on the outside, and your finger protectors protectors and just twist around and that'll keep it in place. So I have this elevated off my table just a little. That's how I started it to try to put my rope down and then it occurred to me it might be not level or even so I just took my metal ruler and put it under there to put the glue on so that it will be flat and it won't stick to my table if any glue bleeds under. But I try to keep my glue like toward the top surface so that it doesn't drip off the bag. 
So that's what I'm doing here, just going along my edge. And you can clamp your corners so that it, they stay nice and tight and square instead of rounding or pulling away. And then when you get all the way around to where you started, put some glue on the bottom there. I'm going to try to make this rope look as nice as possible. And I'm going to use my clippers because these are better for this thick rope. I'm going to put some glue down in there and then smooth it over with my silicone fingertip. And it makes a nice clean edge. See the edge? Pretty good. So now I'm going to take 18 inches of this first red ribbon that is solid. It's a wired ribbon. All of these are wired, by the way. And I'm going to do the same thing with the blue and the same thing with the polka dot burlap. And I'm just going to make a pretty easy bow here. You just twist it over like this. Well, you have some ends and then pinch it up in the center of that loop. Very easy. I like the look of that bow for this project. I considered other things, but I like the look of this. I'm going to do the same thing with the red. You can see how it's just pinched up in the middle. Then I'm using my clamp to hold it. And these little clamps with the pink rubber tips, they do come from Dollar Tree. I love these. Love them, love them. I use them all the time. And I have a bigger set too that comes in a set of two. I'm going to do the same thing with the little burlap. Then I'm going to add that one on the top. And a little scrap piece of a pipe cleaner here around the middle to squeeze it up and twist it around. I am going to just bevel the edges. I'm not going to do any anything fancy. I'm not going to do the dovetail on this one. You can do it however you like. But I'm going to cut these tails pretty short. I want this to be a compact little bow. Then I'm going to fold the burlap in half, wrap it around the center, and then trim off that extra piece of wire back there because we do not need that to attach it to anything. A lot of times I'm not sure where I'm going with the project until I get going and then I kind of get in the flow and then I change things up. So I apologize if that's confusing to anyone. But you know you got to kind of go with you got to kind of go with your gut. Okay. So now I'm just going to trim off the bulk in the back and decide do I want it in the center or do I want it in the side? I think I'm going to put it in the side. Almost always my bows go over there in the left top side. I just use a clamp also from Dollar Tree to hold that down. And then some of this pit berry that also came from Dollar Tree. I believe it was around Christmas or during the fall time. And I'm going to cut three pieces of this that are they're about hmm, six inches long probably. I don't recall that I measured those. It doesn't look like I did. You can easily curl these by wrapping it around a pencil. The more you wrap it, the tighter your little spiral is going to be. So I'm just going to make a few of these. And then since they look like little fireworks or little sparklers, I think they're great for this project. I'm going to put a little hot glue here and tuck it underneath the bow on the side. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, kind of trailing downward. And then, since our glue should be dry at this point, we're going to go ahead and add one at the top. And fix the bow, make them pretty. And see, it's a really tight little bow, so it doesn't obstruct our, our country there in the middle of the, the core piece. Now I'm going to put one little swirl there on the bottom, and then I'm going to make a different type of bow in this corner. You can do the same thing that I'm doing or whatever. You can leave it empty in that corner if you want. But I just felt like it needed a little something else over here in the corner. So in the burlap ribbon this time, I trimmed off the wire edges and I'm just pulling free some of the fibers from that ribbon. Very easy to do. Just take your fingernail and just start pulling away at the parts that are sticking out. See there? You're going to have to start with the one that's off toward the outside and then work your way inward. And I'm just trimming that up a little bit. 
And then I've got some wire jute that I'm using to cinch the middle of this one. I'm going to trim it off. Again, we don't need it for anything. We're going to get it off of there. And then I'm just going to cover it up with the polka dot just to keep the colors consistent from the other bow into this bow. A little hot glue will hold it together. We're going to trim up, of course, anything extra that we don't need. And then glue that down. Now, this is my jar of scraps. This is a jute jar or a thread jar. I'm going to make a very simple little tie for the back to hang it. So this is all you have to do. Fold it in half, tie a little knot in the end. See the little ends right there? And then slide it down and pull it tight. Now you have a hanger. Just gonna put a little hot glue and a little piece of scrap paper on the back and it's nice and neat. Anytime you're moving your project around, if you turn it over, be sure you turn it back and fluff it back out. Fix it how you want it. So what do you think about the first sign? Not bad, huh? Considering that's a window cling, some thrifted pieces, and some Dollar Tree pieces, I think this, I think this is a great look. Very pretty sign. Be sure you're following me on my social media. I have Pinterest and Instagram. Love to see you there. Project number two, the USA tag sign. So you can see that I'm going to be using some spray paint in this project. I've got some pieces of fabric. I have this decor USA piece that came from Dollar Tree. My fabric was thrifted, by the way. This is the thrifted piece. It's a puzzle backing, which makes great signs if you haven't tried it. And this is a Dollar Tree tag sign that I've had for a while and I've used it before. I'm going to use this, just a little piece of sandpaper. Also, I got this in a pack of Dollar Tree. You see my theme here with the Dollar Tree things, right? All right, so I'm going to gently pull this off because I want to keep this piece of burlap cord. I can use this for a bow later if I want to. With scraps, I think that it's important to hang on to them. You never know what you might can use again. So I was very happy to find on inspection of these glittery letters that they really have sort of a paper backing and rather than spending my time sanding them to try to get that off and making that mess and inhaling all that stuff, I could just easily peel that off. And there's something quite satisfying about doing that too. Especially when it comes off in a big chunk. See how easy that is? I mean, it took very little time to do this. So you're gonna do this to each one of your letters. Because flipping them around won't work. It won't work because the letters won't match correctly. So then, there's just a little bit of stuff still left on there. You can peel further down if you'd like, but for me, I thought it, that the texture of this would hang onto that paint a little bit better. So I went ahead and sanded down all the edges because they weren't really sanded. They didn't have a nice edge. They were just, you know, you know, it's a Dollar Tree item. And I wanted mine to look a little better. So I'll take them outside and spray them down with two coats of that matte. I'm gonna do the same thing to the sign. Now, what are we gonna do with this and this? We're gonna put it on our sign. It was painted also, but really with the natural texture, it was so light, it wasn't necessary for me to do that, but I did it anyway. So I'm just going to trim this down and we're going to wrap it around this little puzzle sign. Very easy to do. Just going to run a bead of glue. Be sure you don't take too much time though after you lay your bead of glue because it will start to dry and then you're just gonna have to add more glue and we don't wanna waste, right? The corners are easy enough to do. Turn it under like this. 
add a little bit of glue, and then fold it up. And then you have a nice, neat corner. And don't worry about all the excess, because you're going to trim that off. I just wanted to make sure that I had plenty to make my line straight. And when I pull it, I'm lining it up with the natural stripes on the fabric. And that helps me keep it fairly straight. And that's important when I start doing other parts of the project, that those lines are pretty straight, that my pattern is pretty straight. So my tag is dry. I did go ahead with the letters and that white tag and put one coat of linen white chalk paint. I didn't add that in there, but I did do that just to really make a good solid color. Do you see here how we're doing this ribbon or this piece, this four inch piece of fabric? I learned that from some of my YouTube friends, Crafty Cousins. Okay, so we've cut this piece and I'm just gonna pull this loose because I want the frayed look on both ends. I'm gonna do the same thing down here. I'm gonna take a little snip, pull it, grab one of the threads, and when I pull it down, it's gonna leave a line for me, a gap in that fabric to cut right along there so I've got a nice, clean, finished edge. Then I'm gonna do the same thing on this end. I'm gonna grab a couple of threads and pull those out. And this is gonna look a little bit like a sash across there. So now I'm going back over those letters and I'm gonna go around all of the edges that I can reach with a sanding block to rough it up. And then what I can't get with a sanding block, I'm going to use a folded piece of sanding paper. And the grid on that sanding paper is, um, has more of a bite. So where you use that paper, you're gonna have a more distressed look. And you'll probably see that in here. But now I like that brown showing through the original color of the sign. I like the look of that. So here we go. And you see how you can just put that in, wrap it around your finger and get inside of those little crannies that you can't reach with that block. You can also use a nail file. Okay, so once all that's done and you've dusted them off a little bit, we're gonna start placing them down on this piece. Decide where we want them. And this is what makes that pattern being straight or fairly straight convenient because I can line my letters up going by that. Now I'm gonna have my S overlapping slightly the U and the A. I'm gonna need to raise that up and I'm gonna use some of the scrap foam board. I'm just going to add those down in areas where they're not touching the other two letters, but where it is touching the background underneath. Okay, so we have not glued down that red to that plaid fabric yet, and it doesn't matter, because, or the check fabric, because this is the letter here is going to glue it down. It's going to be sandwiched in between. So I'm going to line it up decide where I want that and then I'm gonna press it down and I'll do the same thing with the A. I'm looking at the line there trying to see where it is and get it fairly straight and then I will know where to put the S. I'm adding my glue on the raised areas because that's what's gonna be touching and I'm going to press that down. I did set a paint can over the top of that to make sure that everything stayed in place. For our embellishments, I'm going to use some of these bicycle spoke charms. I got those at Dirt Cheap. And I'm just going to use my bullnose pliers to cut those off. You can use um, like a nail remover type thing too if you'd like. That way they'll lay nice and flat. I've used my ruler to go across the section of the top here. So I will know how I want to space out my stars. And there's only blue and white in here, which works great because my background, I mean, <laughs> there's blue and red, my background is white. So it worked out nicely, I think. When I got these, I think I got them 95% off last year. So I, play, I paid just a few cents for these. And I knew that they would come in handy for something and they were perfect for this project. I just knew this was the project. So now I'm gonna add some to the letters. 
I'm going to do a blue and then a red on the S and then another blue on the U. I've just kind of put them there randomly, but you know, going at an angle, making sure all my little points are going up just because I don't claim to have OCD, but I do like things to be fairly symmetrical. Now I'm going to put a big dollop of glue in each corner and then across the high sections of this. I'm going to turn this and get a good look from above, try to get this as evenly spaced and level as possible. I want it to stay down on that well, so I'm using these big clips to hold this in place. And then there are my other clamps on the other side that I mentioned earlier. I think I mentioned them. Okay, now we are going to make an extra little something for this, and I bet you know already what I am making. Yes, we're making a tassel. I'm going to just cut a little snip, and then I'm going to rip it away. I want it to be rustic and worn looking, and so ripping it instead of cutting it is going to give it that little rough edge that is going to make this project just really come together. I'm going to do the same thing with the blue that we used in the background. Just tearing them, and some of them are longer than the other ones, which is not a problem because we are going to cut those in half, and they're going to be perfect. So you just fold them and cut them. Then there's our pile. And gather up the pile there, kind of mix them up so you don't have too many of one color together. Of course, it doesn't matter once you get it bunched in your hand, and you could certainly use all of the same color if you want. Now I'm taking some red twine and I'm going to tie this right in the middle and give it a couple of knots to make sure it doesn't come undone. This is so simple. Clipping off the extra, could be tucked in, but I went ahead and clipped it and I'm just gonna pull all those down. I wanna leave a length of cord there because I'm gonna use that to hang it and then I'm going to start a new piece of that jute and tie a knot about an inch down from the top. This is going to hold all of that fabric into a tassel form. As you see it's already starting to look like a tassel, right? A couple of knots to hold it down, to hold it together so it doesn't come undone because I'm going to be pulling on it a little bit when I trim it up. So you're just gonna twist, 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 twist around there till you get that as thick as you want it. I just kinda eyeballed it to what looked right. When you trim it, you can tuck it in. There's another one of those Cricut tools that I got at the thrift store. You just add a little glue, take that tail, and then press it underneath where you wound it and it will stay perfectly. Then I'm gonna trim off any extra threads that are hanging off. Then I'm gonna start trimming off at an angle, some of them at an angle, but not in any particular order to make this little tassel. Now attach, we're gonna attach this by just putting it through that hole there, pulling it up, and then we're gonna lace it back and forth through that hole. Simple. You can put some tape on here if you need help, but it the hole was big enough on the tag sign for it to go through pretty easily. You can see there it's pretty much will thread itself through there. It didn't take a lot of effort. I'm just taking the little spaces out so that it looks nice and solid. I'm gonna flip it over in the back, glue it, and trim it. Isn't that cute? Now, I'm going to just add a little bit of glue there so that it stays in place when I hang it up. We need a hanger, so I'm just gonna use another piece of that, the fabric that we pulled off, and that's gonna be our hanger for this one. Simple. To cover up the back and make it nice and neat, you can just put this down on some crafting paper Trim it up, fold it over, hot glue it down. It's 
Simple, simple. All right. So what do you think about this one? Which one is your favorite? Do you like the, the one we use the clings on or do you like this layered tag? Thank you so much to all of my subscribers. I am so happy to say that I am at 900 subscribers now. It's fluctuating back and forth a little bit, but hey, I'm closer to my goal of 1,000, and that's wonderful, and it makes my heart very happy. As always, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you again real soon. Bye.